All right, I'm here at the Los Angeles Film Festival with Gren Wells, director of The Road Within. Congratulations. Thank you. On being here. And um, you're not new to the business, but this is your directorial debut. Yes, it is. Um, first of all, how does it feel to be here? Amazing. I'm just, I'm so excited for people to finally see it, yeah. you know. Um, before this, pretty much the only people who saw it were Variety, you know, they were very kind to us. Yes. Um, and so now, you know, it's, it's been a lot of buzz for, for a little while, and they saw, like, a cut after, whatever it was, two weeks, three weeks, so mm -hmm. we were very lucky that they, they were so kind, um, and saw the potential in it, and we feel like now it's, it's done, and yeah. so proud of it. And they could also, you know, could have gone a different way, too. <laughs> True, but I, I mean, I really, be, partially because of the budget, but partially I came into this and was very prepared. I knew exactly what I wanted. Yeah. We ended up doing, uh, I told the actors ahead of time, three takes uh, max per, per setup, because we just didn't have time to do more. Um, we ended up averaging two and a half takes, because they were so prepared. And uh, so we didn't, you know, it was one of those in the editing process, it was relatively easy because we didn't have 27 takes to choose yeah, from. Yeah. And it, you know, it was, so it was one of those literally that I got exactly what I wanted, didn't get a lot of extra. So the editor was able to assemble a rough cut very quickly. That's great. Now, tell us a little bit about the film. So it's about a young man named Vincent uh, who has Tourette's and at the beginning of the movie his mother dies, it's not a spoiler, it's the opening thing, uh, and uh, so you know, she was his primary caregiver so his estranged father is forced to step in but he's running for political office and doesn't want his son on the campaign trail. So he puts him into this clinic that's run by a very unconventional doctor and once there he falls in love with an anorexic girl named Marie and together they decide to steal the doctor's car but end up having to kidnap the OCD, OCD roommate named Alex uh, when he threatens to tell on them and so with the dad and the doctor in hot pursuit uh, the three kids go on this life-changing road trip to go deliver the ashes of Vincent's mom to the ocean. And you've got the three kids, um, some of the best young talent. I got so lucky. <laughs> um, tell us how you found Zoe and, and Dev. And um, well I knew ahead of time that if we didn't have the right Vincent, we were dead in the water. Right. So that was the first person that I cast. Uh, looked for a long time, months and months and months, and uh, we were originally supposed to go in November 2012, and I went to the producers in, in September and October, and I said, we, I haven't found the guy. I mean, I've met a lot of incredible people, but I wanted something so, so specific. I wanted tall and lanky, so that the ticks almost had a, a beautiful poetry to them, uh, great hair, great eyes, great smile. Cause Underneath the ticks and the anger of this character, there had to be someone we could fall in love with. You want that contradiction. Right. Yeah. And I knew we also needed a movie star because, you know, to handle the that he carries the movie. Um, and so, you know, couldn't find the guy, couldn't find the guy. And we pushed. And then literally November 16th, 2012, Robbie Sheehan walked in the door. And I just, I knew. Now I knew his work from Misfits and Love Hate, so I knew he was incredibly talented. But he just had this charisma, mm. and I was, it was also an energy thing because the ticks had to be so easily accessible, and you know there's some there's some actors that have a little bit of a slower pace who are fantastic, just not right for this. Yeah. And so Robbie was already spastic and yeah. uh, in the best way, and um, literally I told him right then and there I said I won't make this movie without you. Mm. I, I love how it, it establishes so immediately. The first shot is his face. Yeah. So it's immediately, okay, this is the guy you're going to be seeing for the next, you know, hour and three quarters, and, and, and you're going to fall in love with this guy, and then boom, into the Tourette's, and, and within the first minute of the film, you're already, oh my God, you know, you're, how, are, how am I going to get through this? Um, well, that's, I, I wanted it to be a bit shocking, because I do think that, I mean, it's like the first time that I saw someone with Tourette's, and believe me, I didn't so much research for this. That's that, what I, yeah. yeah. Tell me about that. Um, the uh, Tourette Society actually put me in touch with a young man named Jackson Kramer who grew up with Tourette's. Uh, he actually grew up with coprolalia, which is when you actually, when you ver verbalize words and phrases. Right. Regular Tourette's or just Tourette syndrome is just guttural tics and physical tics. Okay. But when you vocalize, it's called coprolalia. And only about 10% of Tourette sufferers actually have coprolalia. So um, it is, you know, it's the most widely known because it's the one that most film and TV focus on because, you know, it's the most extreme and, and usually you want a character that has the widest arc possible. Um, so, uh, you know, with, with that in mind, I wanted to jar the audience a little bit into like, it, 
the first time you you meet someone, it is it's awkward, and then suddenly you just get used to it. Right. And that's exactly what happened with Jackson and I. I went to lunch with him, and he was so gracious and just said, "Ask me anything." And uh, we're sitting in this restaurant, and at one point he sat on his hands, and I go, "What's that?" And he goes, "It's so I don't flip the table." Now, meanwhile, I'm thinking, flip the fucking table because I want to see what happens, you know. But it was just, it was interesting because once something gets in their mind, they almost have to go through with it. And he's very self-aware. Oh, very, yeah, yeah. You know when you have Tourette's, and you know, you know. I mean, and he's also in his mid twenties now, and he's been experiencing it since he was eight. So um, he knows that there are things, and yeah, you get it. And he just he equated it almost to a, a balloon and letting air out of a balloon. And if you hold the ticks in, which is possible you will eventually explode and that's where you get a huge monster tick so wow. um, and, and how did that how did you translate that to Robert and his performance uh, well I introduced Jackson and Robbie and they worked together for six months all three of us developing the ticks making them personal to Robbie um, and and then you know I even moved them in together for a month so that Robbie could see him tick day and night wow. uh, I mean we we went there because like I said it we knew it had to be authentic. We didn't want to just phone in a Tourette's performance. Uh, uh, this is important, and, and I do think that it can be educational for people. Um, and I think the best medicine tastes like candy. Yeah. So making and, it. And how did you find Dev and, and Zoe? So I've obviously been in love with Dev for years. He's just tremendous, and I knew his energy would work with Robert Sheehan's. So uh, I stalked him, basically. And uh, his, his manager finally, just to get me off of her phone sheet, uh, sat me down with him. And we fell in love. And I just said, look, I will, this is a character he's never played. Uh, I told him I would take care of him, that I wouldn't ever let him look stupid. And he just went there. You yeah. know, and I just, I think he's extraordinary. And people yeah. are going to be wowed by what he does. And so. Um, Zoe, that was another part that was hard to cast. And, you know, so I was anorexic and bulimic growing up. So I know that disorder really well and I wasn't going to send a young actress down that rabbit hole who had either previously experienced it and you know could also fall off that ledge again um, you know or I was just it was it was really important to cast somebody who had a good head on her shoulders uh, and you know the character is dangerous she's sexy she's unpredictable and I met a lot of people who you know we're kind of acting that way but Zoe just is like she's kind of that girl you don't know if she's gonna kill you or kiss you <laughs> you know so I just met her and I, I was just so blown away by once again her energy and and her talent I mean no one has seen her do anything like this she lost 20 pounds for the part wow and believe me she didn't have it to lose we did it safely with a dietitian and a, and a trainer mm. um, and I was watching her every day like a hawk because it's it's easy to fall down that rabbit hole. Wow. Um, and I, I do have to say also about the casting, it was important to not have five white people running around. Uh, I just feel like, you know, it's our job as filmmakers to show what the real world is like. Yes. <laughs> um, and so, you know, with, with Devi, uh, with Dev and, and Zoe, it was one right. where I, was, I got to, um, multicultural cast. Exactly. It, the, um, what about the rehearsal process? Did you guys have the opportunity to do that. Like I said, six months with Robbie, mm -hmm. uh, well, three months yeah. with Dev, and three months with Zoe, and then we had two full weeks where we were all together. Right. Um, and, you know, because so much of this was research into the characters and making them specific, because no two ticks are alike. And so Jackson Kramer was able to teach Robbie how to tick, but then Robbie had to make the ticks his own. Right. Uh, Dev and I met with a, a ton of OCD patients. And you know they all have their own rituals, but once again, Dev had to make them his own. And and Zoe, same thing. Like we went out and talked to a lot of young anorexic girls, and they all had behaviors and stuff. I mean, some of those that in the film, if you see, she she wears rubber bands on her arms right. to, so that it, you know she can feel if it's getting tight or loose, which is even better. Um, knitting, just stuff to take your mind off of the hunger. Uh, so it was little little details like that that I think were were just essential. Now, did, did they have freedom to go off script? Did, did you... No, they... Was there any problem? Because we rehearsed beforehand and went through the entire thing, um, you know, if there was ever a line that, that was uh, uncomfortable for them to say or just, you know, they were always really gracious about asking, do you mind if I say it this way? And usually it was a word here or there, and I was like, of course, I, I trust them, because they really started to in, uh, inhabit the characters. Yeah, and, and what about the idea of you're, you're moving along, it's a road movie, and at mm -hmm. some point... The chemistry between them is working out maybe differently than you had written it, and did you change anything along the way? 
to reflect that? It worked out better. <laughs> I mean, because they just became this unit. Right. And uh, because it was such a condensed shooting schedule, um, we just all became this little family, you know, for those 25 days. Uh, and yeah, it just, it, it was better than I could have imagined. And I like that you said, you said three takes. You, three takes per setup. And that was it. And yeah. then you moved on. So uh, they had to come prepared but we were like that's just it it wasn't like it, you know they showed up one day and it was a, something that I had to implement no I'd, right. I'd let them know beforehand this is all we have time for if we want to shoot this whole script yeah. um, and everyone nailed it most of the time it was it was take one and that's what I would use um, you know and occasionally the only exception were in oneers where we did you know the whole scene in one take and that one I think we did maybe six takes once <laughs> you know was, because that was the only take we were gonna use Talk about the, the visual style, the shooting. So, I really wanted, you know, when I when I look at indie films, I, th I feel like a lot of times audiences shy away from them because it's almost how many different shades of gray right. can we make this movie? <laughs> and I, you know, I, I look at the movies that have touched me. Juno, Little Miss Sunshine, Slumdog Millionaire. What did they all have in common besides Fox Searchlight and the shit from the DNA? <laughs> um, but it was color. Color, and yeah. uh, you know they it's there's something that an audience feels comfortable with when they go in the movie theater and if they're gonna spend money if it looks like a they movie, want it to look like a movie yeah right. and so that was something really important now we did start out more muted because I feel like all the characters are so uh, locked up in their own lives and and then as they get on the road and start to realize that they're capable of so much more than they even right. thought the color starts to open up so the look reflects where they are where they personally. are that's brilliant so I just thought it was an additional way to help tell the story. I felt that I just, I didn't want to leave. I wanted to stay with them. So oh, good. <laughs> because you, you do fall in love with them. You, 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 uh, you feel like you're, you're getting to know them and you're along for the journey. You're uh, a part of their lives and then you don't want to let go. Yeah, I, I fall in love with them too. I don't want to let them go. <laughs> All right. Uh, unfortunately, we're we're just about out of time. But okay. um, Bryn well, Wells, thank, thank you. you so thank much. Thank you so much. The Road Within. Um, hopefully, this will get out to a, a multiplex near near you, and um, and we'll look forward to more from you. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much. Cool.